सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली यू एन हेज प्रोड्यूस इट स्टेट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन रिपोर्ट लुकिंग एट द डेटा अप टू टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू एंड दे estimated the size of national populations at mid year mid year this year and we all know we've all seen the big headlines in this morning's papers that this year at some point india's population will get ahead of china so at least in one area we are leaving china behind that's a unkind comment but you know what if we had heard this 10 15 20 years ago maybe even 5 years ago this would have caused much more despondency and disappointment in india that oh so many more mouths to feed so much more so much more trouble this is overpopulation what will happen to our country and similarly similarly the other side of the coin that probably following the same logic there would have been a great deal of satisfaction in china that ah look at this we've controlled our population growth now even the indians have gone ahead of us because they failed at doing this we've been successful we used to be much more populous than them we worked very hard over the past 50 60 years we controlled our population and i am not even taking you back to our the 60s or before where the great leap forward etc cultural revolution all the awful things that mao did that plowed tens of millions of people into the ground not like that the chinese controlled their population by their enforced one child policy after which they allowed two children etc so you would have thought that on the indian side they would be a lot of despondency and unhappiness and a sense of alarm what the head is going on on the chinese side there would be smug satisfaction what you see on the chinese side chinese side on the other hand is not smug satisfaction what you find in fact is irritation and 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 a kind of impatience so you we've seen the chinese foreign ministry spokesman make this really unkind remark bordering on racism where somebody said india will now have more population than you and he said something like that the quality of population also matters now in this time and age who talks about quality of population i thought the basic principle was that all human beings are are the same particularly that's what all the communist texts also tell it also tell you and at this point until this point china claims to be a country run by the communist party nevertheless let's not let's not get into an argument with that let's look at the politics and logic of this why should a country like china instead of celebrating the fact that it now has lesser population than india is now getting on the defensive saying that oh our the quality of our population is better that we can do better with our population etc etc so on and so forth so how come this equation is changed how come from worrying about having too many people you are suddenly worrying about having not not enough people so the underlying fact is that the concern is not about not having enough people 1.42 billion is enough people but the concern is that if you are not getting new people into your population or new babies into your population then you don't have enough young people and if you don't have enough young people then in the coming decades you don't have enough people in the working age which means which means that in the next 25 30 years in your country in a big country like china the de- dependency ratio will turn negative now there are many estimates to that but the fact is that any time between the next 30 to 35 years dependency ratio will go negative in china which means there will be more people dependent on those who are earning than people who are earning and paying taxes even today if you look at the demographics india may have more population than china but the number of people percentage of indians above the age of 65 above the age of 65 we would say generally populations would be dependent on others above the age of 65 india has 7% china already has 14% and that number is rising in china very fast also because china has not been producing enough babies to re- even replace the population for the past many years which is why they are seeing this decline they also don't have many young people coming up 
in their working ages and that is what is worrying China and that in a way also presents India demographic opportunity because the other important thing to watch here is that while Indian population has gone higher than China's the fact is India's population growth rate has also declined heavily at this point and this is now this has now been the situation for the past two years because we also have data from the National Family Health Survey of 2019 to 21. This tells us that India's overall population right now is at replacement levels, which means the total fertility rate, the number of babies a woman produces in her reproductive age, that is age 16 to age 50, that is, that is the range. If you take that, that is now 2, which means 10 women will produce 20 babies between them. Remember, in 1951, this used to be 6 from 6, India has come to 2. 2 is now almost exactly replacement level. And, and this, when many states in India are way above the national average. I mean, look at a state like Bihar. Bihar is 3.1. National average is 2. Bihar is 3.1. So in Bihar, 10 women will produce 31 babies in their reproductive age, age 16 to 50. Whereas in the rest of India, on an average, it will be 20, 31 to 20. Again, UP would be quite high between 21 and 30. But then you go to go to southern states, Kerala, for example, Tamil Nadu. There, in a way, the population decline has begun. If you look at Kerala, for example, in the 10 years between 2011 and 21, we don't have the census, but we have estimates. Estimates tell you that Kerala's population in 10 years only grew by about 2.2%. 5%. That's when Bihar's population in the same decade had grown by almost 28%. So within our states, there are many differences. And as the states which are laggards or which are producing or which are sort of front runners, you can, you, you can look at the picture any which way. The states that are producing too many babies, they are also seeing their birth rates in decline. So going ahead, these states will decline. And India will also, India has already, already found a sweet spot. That is, India has only replacement value fertility rate. But as this goes down, as UP, Bihar, some of the other states, I mean, if you just want to see the rankings of the Indian state on the side of producing more babies, then Meghalaya tops. Meghalaya is 3.3 to TFR per woman. But leave Meghalaya out in this calculation because Meghalaya population base is too small. So let's not argue there. But the fact is, India will still continue to produce young people. So, so the situation that the Chinese may face, say, 30 years from now, which is their dependency ratio going into the negative, in India, it's not happening at least till 2078. That is 54 or 55 years from now. And even if it does happen, then it will happen slowly. So basically, even until 2100, India's dependency ratio will be quite robust. And that is one of the things that the Chinese are complaining about. They are not complaining so much about India having this uh, having this demographic advantage. They are concerned about the fact that they don't have it and they can't force people to produce more babies because this is something that I've said more than once and I shall repeat again that you can use brutal state force as the Chinese Communist Party had to force people not to produce more than one baby. That you can force people to do. But you cannot force people to produce more than one baby because after one, they said you can have two. Now they say you can have three. Now they say, please produce babies, babies, babies. We want babies. But the young Chinese are marrying late because the country has become richer. China's per capita income is five times higher than India's. The country is becoming richer. People are marrying later if they are marrying uh, and they are not producing babies. So the Chinese are caught. So they don't have answer to this situation, no matter what their dictatorial power is. They cannot get more babies coming out in their population. Now, if you look at if you look at the larger picture, I would say first of all, in case of India, in case of India, the situation is no longer as alarming as it as it used to be in the past. In fact, in a couple of years, we might start worrying about not producing enough babies in particularly in many parts of the country, right? Because what will happen now is that because many of the more progressive states are producing too few babies, look at Punjab, producing too few babies, just, just about 1.6, 1.7 uh, TFR. Some of the states will become labor exporting states or, or India is a continental sized country or internal migrations will begin. 
these are already going on but some of these states will become internal internal migrant supplier states bihar uttar pradesh particularly uttar pradesh madhya pradesh say the area bundelkhand between up and uh, madhya pradesh these are areas like that and, and 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 this phenomenon will then grow so i then hark back to something that i had referred to in some detail in our episode 534 that was based on a lancet report which had just come out that lancet report was titled fertility mortality migration and population scenarios for 195 countries and territories from 2017 to 2100 a forecasting analysis now if you looked at that analysis and i am sharing a link to that episode 534 of kartak letter also with you they had said in fact they had taken up issue with un population department data un population department data is what 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 is now what is now the basis for the latest un report which has come out which has which which has caused these headlines to happen india leaves china behind or will leave china behind this report is also grandly called 8 billion lives infinite possibilities the case of rights and choices now the lancet report in fact said that population decline globally will be much faster than the un population de- uh, department imagines it to be for india for example they said that if you go ahead to 2100 by 2100 india's tfr will come down to 1.24 1.24 is about what china has right now at which point they say india's population would have reduced it would have, would have gone down to 109 crores at 109 crores the lancet and it's a big lancet study lots of authors 109 crores with 109 crores in 2100 india will be the most populous country in the world where will china be think about it china will not even be number 2 china will be number 3 because the chinese will just not produce more babies so chinese will be 72.3 crores at number 3 that is almost a half of the population they have now india will be about about 27 28% less say about 28% less china will be about a half of what it is now today's today the chinese are 142 point something crores it will be then 72.3 crores but who will be the number 2 if india is number 1 at 109 crores in 2100 and china is the third at 72.3 crores who will be number 2 that number 2 hold your breath will be nigeria because nigeria at this point has a tfr of 6 6 that is 3 times of india so the nigerian population will grow they will grow 4 times between now and 2100 in 2100 nigeria will then have a population of about 79 crores which will make them much bigger or 10% bigger than china and similarly many other countries in africa will also grow in the same way if you look at some of the other countries in africa and look at their and look at their tfrs their birth rates their tfrs mali 6.02 niger the highest 7.08 chart 6.72 nigeria we told you about so all these countries will have their populations growing so global population will grow for some time global population may peak at 9.3 billion today is today it's just a little over 8 billion and then it will begin to decline but much of the increase now will come from africa so there were two big suppliers of population or people to the world one was africa the other was south asia so south asia is now coming down quite heavily if you look at south asia then see pakistan now pakistan is one country in south asia which still hasn't got fully its act together on population so their population will continue growing they may grow up to 30 crores by 2030 but in 2100 they will also be 25 crores they will also decline so that is the other south asian or subcontinental nation which is a big supplier to global population so pakistan is will also come down but that will take some time it won't happen so soon but look at the surprise story the biggest surprise will be bangladesh bangladesh in 2017 2017 was was 15.7 crores its tfr was 1.7% in 2017 which means soon enough its population will begin to decline and in 2100 at this rate bangladesh is reckoned to reach 
8.1 crore 8.1 crore that is a half of the population they, that they have right now which means which means in 2100 bangladesh will be less than a one third of pakistan's population now these are the trends that you are looking at and then you are trying to figure out what is it that these trends indicate to us so we've seen the first reaction from the chinese who obviously got worried not because they will have too few people it, it is not a case of numbers. So how can the Indians have more than us? Who will go to Guinness Book of World Records? It's not that. Their concern is from where will we get our young people. New technologies are coming. New ideas are coming. Our people are getting, getting older. Can an, can an aging population handle it? Now various countries do are doing interesting things to deal with their aging population. Many countries are simply increasing their working age to 65 years, which means which is something that Macron is trying to do in France and that's causing trouble, which is, which is to get your people to work for longer. When you have one, one, you don't have a shortage of human resources, then people work for longer. Also, people are healthier now. People's arteries are cleaner. People are popping statins and people are popping uh, blood pressure drugs, etc. So people are working for longer. They are efficient for longer, effective for longer. Also, it delays your pension burdens. So there are ideas like that coming in. But... This world will become a very different place. Once again, I am switching from the UNPD latest report, that is UN Population Department, and going back to the Lancet report, which I would consider to be more accurate because even in the two and a half years that that report has been out, the trends that that report indicated have turned out to be truer than what we've been reading from the UN. Maybe the UN is much too cautious. That according to the trends that they see, if you look at UNPD's idea, then compared to that, the real contribution of sub-Saharan Africa, which is the largest contributor to global population, will be 70 crores less than UNPD's estimates. And South Asia's contribution will be 58.4 crores less than the UNPD estimates. So the decline in global populations will begin much faster at the same time. At the same time, much of the newer additions now will come will come from Africa. So in the global population, the percentage of Africans will increase. And that then, that then brings in other questions. And that brings in the questions of political instability in large parts of Africa, internal wars. Look at Sudan, for example, Sudan, South Sudan. We talked about Sudan yesterday in CDC. Both countries have TFR, of, TFR upwards of 5%. So that is the overall, the general African heartland standard, right? So African population will increase. Will the land there, the economy there produce enough opportunity? Will the economies grow sufficiently? Or will this then lead to forced mass migrations? And also this will be combined with climate change crisis. So that is something that the rest of the world will have to think about. And that's why one of the lessons from this data that's coming out now is that the rest of the world also has to begin to worry about, to be concerned about Africa. This is a world without borders. Everybody, every country has a stake in what is happening in other countries. And at this point, all the rest of the world, including India and China, have to think about what will be happening in Africa. So generally, five conclusions. I've used these conclusions before with lesser data. Now we have more data because now we have UNPD as well. Five conclusions. Number one, population growth is not a scary prospect anymore. In fact, in fact, a rapid decline in population in many of India's states, particularly coastal states, might just be a cause for concern. But population growth, that population is going out of control, who will feed so many, so many mouths, is now a completely irrelevant concern. In fact, think about it. If India's population is going to be 109 crores in 2100 against 143 crores now, and meanwhile, you can imagine that your agricultural productivity will go up per acre, per hectare yields will go up. So this idea that you will not have enough food to feed so many mouths, that idea should now, be, should now be forgotten. But this also reminds us that we have to now start focusing on quality of life. There are several states in India, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Punjab, Delhi, which have to now start thinking about setting up old age homes, for example, because who will take care of the older people? Because these are states which have controlled their population growth. And that's why their average ages are higher and people are getting older. So they're a bit like more developed countries. They might be a bit more like China right now. So they have to cater to their older people. Number two, number two, the time to flatten the peak. If India is going to have a peak, 
various estimates tell you uh, that India will have a peak in 2061. 2048. I'd rather go by the 2048 estimate of Lancet, but I suspect this will happen much earlier. So, so the effort now taken and time taken to flatten this peak, that is reaching a peak population, UNPD believes India will peak at about 160 crores. Maybe it will be a bit less if you ask me. Uh, and if I again combine this with Lancet data, I might, I might say this would happen a bit earlier. But it will time taken to flatten this peak First of all, the peak will be flatter. And second, the time taken to flatten the peak will come earlier than we had imagined. Number three, demographics will change. That I told you that the percentage of older people will increase. Number four, this underlines the need to invest in women and public health. Because if you invest in pub women, first of all, that will help you flatten the population growth curve. And second, it will give more people, more talent, more human beings in the workforce. If you think, if you think that with the slowing, the slowing down of population growth, we could carry on building an economy or a growing economy with mostly predominantly men in the workforce, it's not going to work. So countries, particularly India, will need to invest in women. And fifth, and fifth, don't worry about growing economies, coming technology, automation, etc. Because going ahead, you will actually need a lot of that automation. And if you create wealth, rest of the problems will answer themselves. Having said that, I will tell you a story. And that story I'm reminded of by this unusual Chinese reaction, this churlish Chinese reaction at being left out by India in the number of people or the, or the size of population. Usually, normally you would have thought the Chinese would be celebrating this, that see, Indians, we've done so much better. Our system works, your system sucks, but now, no. That reaction from the Chinese also reminds me of a story in a completely different context. So, Chandrasekhar, who was our Prime Minister for just a few months with just 40 MPs, he was very sick and occasionally I will go and meet him and have long, long conversations. Politicians have a lot of time for you when they are out of power. And in this case, he was quite happy to see a visitor come in, particularly a journalist come in, so he could hold forth and talk about this and that. He was also, he was also a very accessible and approachable person. So he once said to me, he said, Dekhye, Shekhar ji, dunia kitni badal gayi hai. See how the world has changed. He said, Ek bar hamari sarkar thi, jab hume apna sona biman mein dalke, airplane mein dalke, bahar bhejna pada tha. So he was the prime minister who sent India's gold overseas so that India could raise the money to repay, to, to pay some of its dues in foreign exchange, so it would not have a default. That's the prospect Pakistan has been facing for some time now. But he sent out India's gold. So he said, look, I was prime minister and as prime minister, I had the mortification of having to send out my gold, my gold overseas, so I could raise some money to save my country from defaulting on its overseas payments, just so that I could have some more foreign exchange. And see what time has come now. The government of India is has so much foreign exchange that it's encouraging people to park some of it overseas or to invest some of it overseas. He was obviously referring to the scheme that Bajpayee government had started in February 2004 called Liberalized Remittance Scheme, under which an Indian citizen at various points of time from one and a half lakh dollars to two and a half lakh dollars in a year out of their tax paid income can invest overseas. And he said, see how times change. So the lesson of the story is that as times change, facts change, minds change and responses change. And that is what we can read in the Chinese response to this latest population data.